The Fun Hole Lookout Campground set creates quite a cozy scene. The campsite features a tall fire watch tower that provides a panoramic view of the surrounding scenery, as well as a clearing where you can park your camping trailer and enjoy a cozy fire. There's a discreet outhouse tucked behind a tree and a serene river flowing nearby. This set is absolutely packed to the brim with details, which is something that I've come to expect from Funhole, who is really making a name for themselves as an up-and-coming LEGO competitor brand. Like all Funhole sets, the campground comes with a lighting kit and with 1,426 pieces, this set has a great price at only 80 US dollars. Let's go ahead and dive into my full review of the Lookout Campground. It's officially review January here in 2024, starting off the year strong with some great sets from Funhole. Here on the channel, I'm really doing my best to only review and showcase things I'm personally interested in and excited about. And when I saw this campground set, I knew I had to have it. The Firewatch Tower is truly a showstopper. It's nearly 14 inches tall, and I cannot wait to create my own larger campground mock with this set as a centerpiece. I wanna take you through my my favorite details of this build. Taking you through every single detail in the build is gonna be difficult because there are so many little tidbits to talk about, but I will do my very best. Every single fun hole set includes a lighting kit, which truly sets them apart from any other brick building company that I've seen. I've built enough of their sets now that I'm starting to get a true sense of how the bricks feel, and I describe it as very similar to Lego's feel, but slightly less snappy and a bit more of a tighter clutch. It's hard to put into words, but that's how I describe it. They feel good, and they do feel distinguishable from Lego if you had to do a blind build test, but not in a bad way. I've come to enjoy their stuff enough to review five of their sets. Last week I reviewed their newsstand, which was a delightful little set coming in at only $35. Funhole's got five themes right now, steampunk world, middle ages, the old west, town life, and this campground set is a part of the retro house theme, which mostly consists of some cabins like the lakeside lodge I did a review of and a farm truck. Let's start with the foreground and move our way backward on our tour of this set. The river aspect of the set is created with some light blue plates on the base with light blue transparent tiles on top with a few transparent curved slopes representing ripples in the water. There's a frog on a lily pad, some cattails, a few flowers, a can of orange soda that looks suspiciously like litter in the river, and we get our first lighting element in the form of a lantern sitting atop some rocks on the shoreline. As the landscape slopes up, we find a flat ground open area which is meant to house the camping trailer and a nice picnic blanket. There's a few various food items and pieces you may recognize, taking inspiration directly from Lego's own line of molds. There's also another lighting element, a lantern sitting on top of a box. Now I want to talk more about this camping trailer, which is absolutely beautiful since this is a set from the retro house theme. It seems like they were going for a vintage trailer, almost like a silver Airstream style trailer from decades past. One unique aspect of Funhole's lineup is their spray painted pieces. These silver bricks are spray painted by hand, which gives them a really nice sheen, something that would be impossible to do with pure plastic. And this certainly sets them apart as a unique piece type. While it's built in what is nearly a modular fashion, the roof of the camper is technically not removable. So if you try to take it off, it's inevitable that you'll break a few pieces off and need to do some reassembly. Assembling. The scale of the camper is a little small. It almost feels like a miniature on the inside. There's a bed and a coffee maker, a first aid kit, but there is no way a minifigure will fit comfortably in here. It's six studs wide, and while this trailer looks great displayed on the campground, it has a trailer hitch that can be used with any compatible LEGO vehicle. I personally like it with this green SUV, which is one of my favorite LEGO cars from recent years. 
but you can see the scale still looks a little bit small for the trailer even when being pulled behind the car that is okay though because like i said it looks gorgeous with the reflective pieces one small detail fun hole gives you two sets of these white modified tiles and two different sets of stickers for these awning pieces so you can choose whether you want a green or dark orange color scheme or you can mix and match them which i thought was a really nice little addition for them to give you next to the trailer you'll see our campfire another light up element and some light gray pieces creating the fire pit and a spit over top which holds a black pot while i love the design of the fire pit it's basically impossible for the pot to sit level without leaning to one side or the other because of the way the handle is designed that's okay though moving up one plate in elevation there's a little pond accentuated with some lovely foliage of different types and some nasty water using transparent green pieces a tree provides some shade over the pond and there's a birdhouse a bird and a little toadstool here which are all some details that i loved Hiding in the very back corner of the build is a little outhouse with another light on it and a little radio tower. It's pretty nice of them to provide a place for minifigs to do their business and who doesn't love a brick built toilet? I really love the design of the tree as well. I think they did a good job of filling out all of the branches. And finally, onto the focal piece of the build, this massive firewatch tower. The build of the tower is very sturdy. The legs use a series of snot bricks and interlocking tiles on each side to hold it all together and it's a technique that works quite well the tower is created using brown and light brown pieces to show variations in wood color and the only printed pieces in the entire build come in the form of these printed 2x4 wood planks the crisscrossing support beams don't seem to add much in terms of stability so they're mostly decorative but they do add realism there's a staircase up to this first floor a ladder to the second and another staircase on a balcony takes you up to the top of the tower there's another set of lights here on the cabin exterior and the light pointing down to the campground below really helps to illuminate the entire campground scene. Without that light, it'd be much darker. The cabin is a cozy bedroom space for whoever it is on duty with a bed, a wood burning stove and a map of the surrounding area. There's some nice artwork on the wall as well. The roof is modular, so it can technically come off, but the lighting does attach to the roof. So you'll need to remove that to take it all the way off. The black roof made with slopes looks great and it has the chimney for the wood stove and the radio antenna, probably for communicating with other park rangers. Man, that was quite a mouthful. I absolutely love this entire scene of this build. They did a really good job on this. There's three minifigs and a German Shepherd that come with the set. Fun Hole has their own unique minifig design that they're putting in their sets now. I feel like I was a bit harsh in my last review for Fun Hole when I was saying that I didn't really like the design of their minifigs and how they look, but I think they can definitely grow on me. They're certainly not the worst minifigs I've seen. This guy looks like Dwight Schrute, which tells me it's his first time ever going camping. There's a woman with a nice plaid blouse, and this guy with the scarf is the one they picture on the watchtower. And having your own original minifigs is certainly better than copying off of Lego. The lookout campground comes built on what is essentially a mills plate. The advantages of mills include not only a more detailed and dynamic terrain, which you certainly get here, as the water from the river is at the lowest point of the build and the shore gradually rises up as a hill across the entirety of the build. Another advantage of mills though is that it allows easier access for wiring for Lego lighting kits and you can run wires on the inside of a mills plate through the gaps. The initial building steps involve laying the foundation for the set, creating structural elements on the bottom and putting the wiring setup in place for the lighting kit, which is done within the mills plate itself. While the lighting is mostly concealed within the mills plate inside the set they've added this nifty trap door which allows you to access the central lighting board in case you ever need to now while i'm talking about the benefits of mills another thing about mills plates is that they are typically 32 by 32 studs just like lego base plates and this set may look like it comes on a perfectly square 32 by 32 base plate which is what i certainly thought as well but it actually has two additional studs added on the entirety of the right side of the set, which mostly consists of extra terrain detail. Your guess for why they added this is as good as mine, but if that became an issue for you, if you wanted to combine this with other sets, it wouldn't be too difficult to modify that. But don't let that oddity deter you from this set. I did want to mention it, but I don't think it's a huge deal. It's just a little bit weird. 
Just a little bit more detail on the lighting kit. Like I said, the wires are ran from the central board in the bottom of the set, and you will complete the lighting kit throughout the course of the instructions, meaning when you're done with the set, the lighting kit is fully installed already and you don't need to go back and install the lighting kit entirely at the end, like you do with aftermarket lighting kits for Lego sets. The lighting kit is powered by USB and Funhole provides an attached battery bank that will power the kit using three AA batteries not included, or you can use an external power bank or a USB outlet to power it. If you use their power bank, there's a little slot in the back of the set they left open to store the power bank out of view. I'm happy they added this feature. The spacing is a little tight and it's hard to get it back out, so I wish they would have enlarged the hole by one more stud. Regardless, it was a really nice thought and I do appreciate it. On this set, the wiring is hidden quite nicely. There's only two or three spots with wires that are clearly exposed. And even then you kind of have to look for them to even notice it. Besides the three or four printed wood plank tiles, all other graphic elements for this set come in the form of stickers of which there are 19. I know that'll be a bummer for some people, but the stickers they do provide are very nice. They're used for signage and details all throughout. Lastly, I'll talk briefly about the instructions. I personally love Funhole instructions, and since I've reviewed so many of their sets, I find myself repeating things at this point. The instructions are extremely close to Lego quality in terms of ease of use, clarity, and in some ways they actually do things I wish Lego would include in their instructions, such as they put little indicators by similar pieces that make sure you know how to tell them apart, or showing you different angles on a diagram of different steps so you know exactly what you're doing. One thing that was missing from these instructions that I really enjoyed from prior Funhole sets is the analogous colors list, a page that shows the actual bricks next to the way they appear in the instructions. And if you've ever built a Lego set with different colors of brown or dark pieces, you know how helpful this would be. They did provide a pair of tweezers and a brick separator in this kit. The tweezers are super helpful for maneuvering the wires and small pieces throughout the build. And honestly, it's gotten to the point where I use these tweezers for any brick building activity, not just lighting kits. It just helps when you have huge fingers like me. The price point for this set is $80, like I mentioned already, but if you use my Amazon discount code in the description, you can save 5% off, which I know isn't much, but luckily the price for this set is still very reasonable in my opinion. Over 1,400 pieces for 80 bucks, comes out to about five and a half cents per piece, plus the lighting kit, which is really reasonable. For this gorgeous set, all these details, a lighting kit, and for only $80, I'm gonna rate this thing a nine out of 10. Let me know down below in the comments what you think of this set. On my last review, I got a lot of positive comments about Funhole. Hit the like button or dislike if you hated it. Subscribe or don't. And please, if you hate alternative LEGO competitors, please let me know down below in the comments. I'd love to argue with you about it. We can get into a fight. Thank you to my friends at Funhole for providing the set for this video. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace.